Um, so what are your thoughts on Jing Hu Lei? I've recently been struck with the realization that for the past four months, I've been living with a complete and utter stranger. A roommate I know nothing about. I've heard the phrase opposites attract more times than I can count, but as I look at the tattered bits of information I've gathered about this man, it, it seems clear that we cannot be any more different. So where's the attraction? In an admittedly back word attempt to get to know my roommate better, I made this documentary to find out who Jing really was. But somehow amidst the insanity of all of this, I began to find myself. So I'm sure you're wondering how this all started. This is me. We're in California right now. I'm the one in the red jacket. Right there. My name is Julian Shapiro Barnum, and I like to do things that, to say the least, push boundaries. And although I like to tell myself it's for art, I fear that the nasty truth of it all is that behind it is this ego. Something in me that, for better or for worse, loves being the center of attention. So I think you can understand my fascination with somebody who doesn't. This all started back in June when I received an email about my housing at BU. Along with when, how much, and where, there was a name. Jing Hu Lei. My future roommate. I was obviously curious. There was very little I could find about him online, besides the fact that he had a very well-kept LinkedIn account and he had previously been a sandwich artist. I decided to try Facebook. Facebook, unfortunately, was another dead end. But I knew I couldn't stop there. I mean, this was the person I was going to be spending the next year living with. I had to reach out. This was precisely when things started to get interesting. I reached out to Jing and June to say hello and get to meet him. Two months later, he responded, asking if I would move out so he could live with his friend. Not the welcome I was expecting. I also learned he was a sophomore. He had done this all before. I was going to be even more alone. But an account of my interactions with Jing is not the story I'm trying to tell. We're getting to that. To understand what's about to come, though, we need to sidetrack for a moment. On Boston University's West Campus, there are three dorms. The middle one is Sleeper, and my floor, the 11th, is known around campus for two things. The first being how close everyone is. I'll get to the second reason in a moment. We all really started to get to know each other around the second week of school when there was a fire. Something about fearing for our lives just brought us together. And after that, we just kind of meshed. Would you say Sleeper 11's a tight-knit community? Of course. Definitely. Get out of my room. We bonded as a floor further through game nights, ice skating trips, snowball fights. But before I continue, I want to point something out. Do you, in any of these snaps, see Jing? No. It's almost as if he doesn't exist. But the crazy thing is, is that he does exist. I can assure you that. But then where is he in these Snapchats? Where does he go? I swear to you, there are weeks that go by where I never see him. If not for the fact that his sheets move and more and more socks appear on the floor, I would question if he even lived here at all. It's like he's a ghost. Now, the second reason people know about Sleeper 11 isn't something we're super proud of. There was an incident. An incident that awarded our bathroom the name Nut Hub. I attempted to get my RA to explain what happened. I could barely get a word out of him. Could you, in your own words, describe to me the Nut Hub incident? I, I don't quite know what that is a reference to. He was lying. I have some ideas. Extrapolate. Extrapolate. Um, I don't know if I want to. He was clearly too afraid to talk about the subject. I decided not to push. Should I end it there? Yeah. What is possibly more informative than anything he could say is the email he sent out to all of us, including Jing. So pretty much what happened was this. Could you describe to me what happened with the NetHub? Oh, God. 
So there's one really good shower in the Sleeper 11 bathroom. Someone nutted in the shower. It started as one kind of droplet, then a line of nut. It gets on the wall. And someone else who came in after found it. And it was me who discovered this, by the way. So I thought it was soap at first. Tried to wash it off. Realized it was not soap. Almost had a heart attack. And then uh, I warned the people. Because that's what you're supposed to do in these types of situations. The bathroom was nicknamed the Nut Hub. Would you say everyone knows about this? I would say everyone, I, I'd say it's widespread. Oh yeah. A good number. Everyone, everyone, absolutely everyone at BU knows about this, without a doubt. But when I asked Jing Hu, he had never heard of it. Jing, do you know about the Nut Hub incident? No, what is that? It's when somebody came in the showers. Oh. You've never heard of it? No. <laughs> Um, at this point in making the documentary, I wasn't exactly sure what to do next. For the first time in this entire process, knowing Jing felt completely unobtainable. Jing didn't know what the Nut Hub was. Something almost the entirety of BU knew and joked about. It, it was like he was living on another planet, not 10 feet away from where it happened. I could not understand how separate he was. I interviewed people around the hall in the hope of gathering any information, but it seemed that nobody had even heard of him, let alone seen him. They all gave me the same confused, blank face. And right when I thought that the only option would be for me to actually talk to Jing, I noticed something strange. I was going over some old material I had filmed when I noticed this clip of me and my best friend Quentin. I thought it was a completely insignificant clip, and then I noticed something. Quentin's roommate was playing a video game. I had seen the game before, it was like deja vu. I frantically started to pour over everything I had filmed in the past months. Could the key to unlocking Jing's heart and mind have been sitting in front of my face this whole time? And then I found it. It was the same exact game. But that couldn't mean anything, could it? And right when I thought things couldn't get any weirder, I got a text from my friend Quentin. Dude, I found an old housing form with Jing's name on it in my trash can. It all started to make sense. When Jing had asked me to move out, it was so that he and Quentin's roommate could live together. This meant two things. One, Quentin and I were almost roommates, which would have been totally awesome. And two, I had just found my way into Jing Hu. Can you state your name? Steven. So, Steven, mm. what are your thoughts on Jing Hu Lei? I love Jing Hu. He's one of my closest friends. He's such a nice dude. I had locked myself in a prison of my own ignorance. The Jing that Steven was describing was entirely different from the Jing that I knew. The one who stayed out for weeks on end, who barely spoke a word. What Steven made me think was that maybe I was the reason why Jing and I didn't have a relationship. It's hard to get personal with Jing Hu immediately. I had just given up. What Steven made me realize was that Jing was so much larger than the box that I had fit him into. As Steven told me hilarious stories about Jing, I realized that I could have been friends with this awesome guy if I had only made the effort. I had given up because it was convenient and because the weird absent roommate stories were too silly not to pass up. So once again, I had done something for the attention. But things had recently changed a bit. Ever since I started making this documentary, Jing and I had actually been talking more. He started sleeping in the room more, I became friends with his girlfriend. I think that making this documentary got me interested in him, instead of me wanting him to be interested in me. He caused me to grow. He made me truly get to know someone else. As nervous as I was, I knew the only thing left to do was actually interview Jing himself and tell him about the documentary. 
When I sat him down, I was so nervous I could barely speak. But Jing was anything but mad. All right, Jing. You ready? Uh-huh. Brief interview. Okay. Okay. Jing. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Jing. Wait. wait sorry. <laughs> state. Can you state your name? Jing. Perfect. So, Jing, how would you feel if I told you that for the past two months I've been making a documentary about our relationship? Well, I think that's a very interesting topic to choose. How does it make you feel? <laughs> I guess it's like honored that you have so much to talk about about our relationship. Do you feel like we both made an effort to get to know each other or do you feel like we just kind of did our own thing? We definitely did our own thing. But don't you, I feel like recently we've started to talk a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I showed Jing and his girlfriend the documentary and as we all watched and laughed together, Jing asked me if I wanted to get coffee with him. It took me three months, but I had finally, truly reached out to him with this documentary. And he reached right back. Oh, what you are is hard to find. You could teach the deaf, or you could lead the blind just by the shock of your touch. And I know how it feels, or the knife in your stare, and the way that it feels me.